And here we are with Alice in Wonderland, apparently. 2023, Amy won problem number six. Alice knows that three red cards and three black cards will be revealed to her one at a time in random order. Before each card is revealed, Alice must guess its color. If Alice plays optimally, which means she, you know, there's probability involved, there's chance, she's going to choose the option that has the highest likelihood of occurring. Uh, as you would, right, if you're playing optimally. The expected number of cards, in other words, the expected value of the number that she gets correct, that she will guess correctly is the fraction m over n, where those are relatively prime positive integers. Find their sum. Relatively prime means it won't reduce, not that they're prime numbers. Okay, so now what? Uh, that's not what relatively prime means, but in this context, it means that because they're a fraction. Okay, um, here's the thing. Just think about it. The first card that comes out, it doesn't really matter what she says. She has a one in two chance of getting that card correct. And so we can actually, instead of calling them red and black, I, when I did my notes on my paper, I used red and black, but R and B look a lot alike. So I'm going to switch it now on the board to just something different so it doesn't look quite the same. Let's use A and B instead. Okay. And you're trying to think, how would you come up with this? What would be a strategy? Well, let's just assign the first card to be one of the letters. Okay, so given that the first card that comes out, no matter what she guesses, it's going to come out A. Okay, we're going to take away one of these letters now. And you're going to have five letters remaining that must come out. Because the first card that comes, there's no strategy. It's simply a coin flip. You just guess, right? In fact, whenever there's an equal number of letters remaining when she makes her decision, it's going to be a coin flip. And we probably want to think about that and circle back to it a little bit to see how we can capitalize on that. But the thing that I did initially is eliminate one letter, assume that it doesn't matter. You don't have to switch it either. You can just do 10 cases. Why 10? Because 5 choose 2 and 5 choose 3 is 10. And so we could just make a list of these out if we wanted to. Maybe there's a way to do it without listing. You've got 12 minutes, just list them out. Five, choose two, 10, 10 cases, right? Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Although I want to switch the first order. I like to have in five, choose two listings. I like to have the thing uh, on the end with the two. And what I do is I call it an anchor and a floater. I'm gonna make this the anchor and I'm gonna float the floater to all the positions and then keep the anchor in place every time. So we'll put, we'll make it a little bit lower so we can write above it. Um, and let's get rid of that line. That's gonna be the anchor and the anchor again and the anchor again. Meanwhile, this will have a B value and then A and then you'll have two B values and then A. And then you'll have all three B values and A. And then of course this is B and B and B. So again, the anchor stayed, the floater floated. And once it's floated all the way to here, you're gonna move the anchor in one. These are my terms, by the way. I don't think anybody else calls it this. It's just the way my brain processes what's happening. So now we're gonna move the floater back to the side of the anchor and a B goes over here. So the anchor's moved in one, floater back to the side. And that will be the first one of that type. I'm gonna, because I'm gonna run out of space, I don't wanna like squat down. I'm gonna go ahead and write the other five over here. And again, uh, we've got BA on the back side. That's the, the anchor. And we're gonna have two copies of that. And then the floater's gonna move in one spot so that it looks like this. The floater moved into here and the B switched spots with it, the B is now here, this front B is still there. One more time, the floater is gonna move to the front, A, the anchor stays exactly where it is because that's what anchors do. And uh, hence the name, you like the terminology, don't lie. Okay, then we're gonna put the anchor in one more spot and bring the floater back to it and you will go here. And then of course the floater will float to the front, the anchor staying in place. And finally, the anchor's gonna move in one 
and you get the one that we had originally before I erased it. Okay, so there's our 10 cases. Now we've got these 10 cases. First off, you can make this list of 10 items with having no clue what you're going to do. A lot of times when you're not quite sure, how am I gonna handle the expected value when I get there? Sometimes in problems, we peek ahead. I know what this is gonna look like. And when I get there, I'm not gonna know how to do it. So why list it all? Why make the list? Uh, well, the answer is because you've got 12 minutes and sometimes, I mean, it's an average 12 minutes per question. Sometimes once you've made the list, you're looking at something visually with your eyes, ideas will come to you about how to handle that situation. Let's see if we can spot that idea now. So already she's on the first match, this one right here, say they come out in this order, okay? Um, we already know the first one was an A. She had a one in two chance of getting that right. An expected value is the probability of an occurrence times the value of that occurrence. And you add all of them up. So it's one half times one, but anything times one is itself. So we don't really need that. But for the sake of the uh, expected value formula, probability times value, we put it. Okay, on my paper, I'm probably not gonna write this every time because there's no point, but on the board here, I will leave it for demonstration purposes. So then what? When she gets to this one, think about what would happen. If you're looking, think about it, there's a, a, a hat, right? Or some, some box or something with two A's and three B's in it, and you need to guess the most likely outcome. You're gonna guess B because at that point when there's three and two, right? Let's just make this little cup right here. We've got random B, B, A, A, and B. What is the highest chance of something coming out of this cup? There's three B's, two A's. Don't bring that home on your report card. Your parents will kill you. Uh, but no, really don't. Um, anyhow, that's kind of just a joke actually. It's probably fine. But seriously, B's, B's, higher chance of B, right? So she's gonna get this one right in this scenario. So we have to do each scenario and then we'll take all of the scenarios and probably divide by 10, right? To get her expected value because it's gonna be the average of all of those outcomes. So she would get a point here. I'll circle this one for the point. Now, right here, she would have a one in two chance for this one one and two chance, I'll put it above the B. And then this B, again, once the B is missing, think about it, in the pool is now two A's and a B. What's she going to guess? Not B, she's gonna guess A. That's the most likely occurrence. So she's gonna get zero points here. No points for that B guess. Yet definitely she would have said A. But now there's only A's left. Of course she's gonna guess A. And the A corresponds to what? Red and B will be black, okay? So A is actually red. All right, so then she's gonna get both of these points. Let's count her, if this was the way the cards played out after the first one, let's count the value of this occurrence for her. One, two, this would be one more point here in the front, she would have guessed B, remember? So one, two, three and a half, and this A would have been a one and two chance as well. So you're going to get half plus another half, four points. She would get an expected value of four points when those six cards came out. Not too shabby. Uh, again, what would this be? It would be half, one times one, and each card's worth one, right? So do we really need the one for any of these? You kind of don't, yeah? So half plus one plus half plus zero plus one plus one. One, two, three, combined four. We're good, we're good. Okay, let's go to the next one and just work your way through this whole list. Do each one. In fact, if you haven't done this yet, pause the video right here, pause it, go make the list and see if you can get all of them correct. You're then gonna divide by 10 to get your answer. So uh, the next thing would be what? Don't forget, all of them start with A. And you might be asking, and we'll talk about it again at the end, why don't I have to do the ones that start with B? And again, we'll get back to that at the end. I wanna finish this method first, so the A is always gonna contribute one half. Let's just go through. If one A is gone, the higher likelihood is B. She is going to get one point for that. Then here, uh, you now had two of each remaining. It's, it's a coin flip again. You're back to getting a one in two chance, okay? But on that one, we don't know if she got it right or not. She has a one in two chance, okay? We don't determine that. 
But when there's two A's and a B left, the higher chance is for A. That means whenever there's more and that's the one that comes out, she's guaranteed to get that one right. That's gonna be an expected value of one. Back to a coin flip, could get it right, maybe she doesn't, but the last one she definitely gets right, okay? So now what do we got? We've got one, two, three, 4.5, 4.5. So it's not always the same, okay? Um, yeah, we're good here, okay. Then let's go to the next one down the list. I'm gonna erase some of this because we don't, I need space to calculate. So let me just erase that and um, maybe I won't do the one half in front. I'm just afraid I'm gonna forget it. We'll just put one half. Okay, then the B here, it's guaranteed she's gonna get it right. In fact, all of these first Bs, she's going to get right because they were the higher chance. So you're gonna have one plus. The A is a coin flip, we don't know. But when there's two Bs and an A left and the B comes next, she's guaranteed to get it. The final BA is going to be a coin flip plus a guarantee, okay? So we've got one, two, three, four, and the extra half is another 4.5. Then what? Uh, now on this one though, don't forget the first one's an A. She has no chance to get this as an A. She's going to guess B. It's the most likely occurrence. So she will get zero for that A. Plus the B is back to a coin flip, one half, okay? Oh wait, no it's not. I'm sorry, let's think about this carefully. Be careful with that kind of stuff too where you uh, jump in your head to an incorrect conclusion. You're missing two A's. There's a great chance the next two are going to be a B she's gonna get both of these Bs correct. So one and one. Then the next one's the coin flip because there's two remaining and then the last one's guaranteed. One, two, three point five, four. You're gonna get four here. All right, then on this one, um, again, the B guaranteed to get it right. There's one plus. B is a coin flip because there was an equal number remaining, two Bs, two As. Uh, so you have a half. The A is guaranteed. You're back to a coin flip, and the final one will always be a guarantee. In fact, we might even consider taking the final one off, but I think it helps us with processing, so I'm gonna leave it there. So uh, one, two, three, four, point five. Okay, let's go to the next one over here. Starting with that upper left B, it's guaranteed one because it's the most likely occurrence as usual. You're to a coin flip because there's been one of each missing, there's two of each remaining, coin flip, then there's Two Bs and an A, higher likelihood is B, guaranteed to get this B right, coin flip guarantee. So plus one half plus one, one, two, three, four point five. We'll put that over here. That's her expected value if they came out like that. Um, again, all of these have the A in front, don't forget. So they are all six there. All right, then what? Um, Next one, the A, she's not gonna get that right. It's not a very high chance for her, 40% chance that that's an A. She's gonna get zero points right there. Um, and then we're not, the half will do at the end of what you did before. The B is guaranteed to be right, as is this B. It's a lot like this scenario here. When two Bs came in a row, she was guaranteed to get both of those right. You kind of start to get faster too as you're going, and we end with coin flip and guarantee. So one and one, 1 1.5, 2.5, 3 3.5, Now she's got four. Okay, next one, um, the B here is guaranteed points. Let's go down here and write it, one plus, guaranteed points. Then you have two of each, you're at a coin flip, followed by zero for this A, because you had two Bs left, you would have guessed B, Alice would have guessed B. And then both Bs are guaranteed because they're all that's left. She would have definitely guessed those values. So one, two, three point five, four for that one as well. Okay, on to this one over here. Again, an A was missing. There's no way she's guessing A. You get zero. Then the B is guaranteed. You're going to get uh, not one half. You're going to get one. So zero plus one. And then here on the A, What's left? You're missing two A's, yet this is what's left when you made that call. You would have guessed B. So she would get that wrong and get zero points for this A. 
then the two Bs are guaranteed, one and one. One, two, three, and the one half is 3.5. Okay, last one. Um, you're gonna have the one half for the first one, but then this is zero and zero. So I'm just gonna put it right underneath, zero plus zero, but the final three are all guaranteed. So we're not gonna write plus one, plus one, plus one, just pretend we did three plus a half, 3.5. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add this all up. I think what I'm gonna do is take these two 4.5s and donate their 0.5s to these 3.5s. So now collectively, these are all fours. So I've got fours, four fours, five fours, six fours, seven fours, eight fours, and then two 4.5s. Eight times four, 32, the two 4.5s, nine, you're at 41. 41, and you're gonna divide that by 10. Why divide by 10? Because we have 10 cases. Now, let's discuss what would have happened if we had instead, um, 41 over 10, we'll get that in a second. What would have happened if we had instead done all 20 cases? We already started, we took the B out, all the cases with the B coming out first, right? Because six choose three is 20. Um, in fact, you would have gotten for the other 20 cases, this exact same, or other 10 cases, this exact same one. So um, you would have said um, 41 plus 41 over 20, and 82 over 20 is still 41 over 10. Note, 82 over 20 doesn't fit the M over N criteria. They have to be relatively prime and it would have divided out. So there's really no point in doing the B versions and the first choice is arbitrary, right? Once that's decision, it's always gonna be a half. We don't even need to think about the other 10. I just talked about what it was just in case you still weren't convinced by my argument that it's symmetric and it doesn't really matter. So we've got 41 over 10. These are relatively prime. In fact, that one is prime. Answer 41 plus 10, 51. You guys have a good one.